recording. So good afternoon, everybody. This is JJ DiGeronimo, and I am among some amazing energy practitioners and light workers. I am thrilled to have you here at TogetherWeSeek.online. And today my guest is Donna. Donna and I met a few weeks ago through, I would say, a serendipitous intersection. And her story was fascinating. In fact, I cut her off after a few minutes. I'm like, we have to save your story for a live interview here in our community Together We Seek. And today I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity because just the little bit she told me, I'm already so excited to join in. So whether you're live with us today or you're listening to the recording, I hope you will gain the nuggets that I've already gained in such a short time. So Donna, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. No, well, thank you very much for having me. I, I really appreciate being here. Uh, a little bit my professional facilitator by training. Uh, with a strong connection to nature. And so it's a kind of an innate understanding of systems and how that works. Uh, so a long time ago, I decided to, to sort of merge uh, science with spirit in, to, in order to see a more the, the world at a, at a wider in a wider way. And I tried to do that in business. That was the aim, which has <laughs> been a bit of a challenge. Uh, but we're getting there, you know, nothing like a, a pandemic to interrupt things and hopefully help people see things differently or think differently. So yeah single mom for many, many years while I was getting my business running. She's a surfer and lives in the far West coast. So, so, uh, and I have a granddaughter, so that's cool. Yeah. That is super cool. Yeah. Well, one of the things that really got my attention and we were talking about a business community and a presentation and conversation we were having amongst business leaders. But one of the things you talked about is being a nomad. And I was like, wait, what? And so I just, I would love to dive into the whole story, but there's so many things that you want to talk about. So when you think about it, I think about women that have to have everything figured out before they step forward, you know, every T crossed, every I dotted. But when you said you were a nomad, that like throws all of that out the window. So I think like, yeah. what did you learn from that? And, and how did that, how did that shape where you are right now? Well, okay, that's a big question. Let me see if I can <laughs> pare it down a bit. I mean, I think the first thing that happens when you have everything that would normally define you, you know, your identity, your sense of security, you know, who you are in the world, when that disappears, you're left with you and your essence. So there's a beauty in, in, in removing the external and, and discovering, you know, who are you without all of these props? And, and because it, it just allows you to connect with who you are and what you really want from life. And, and, and so there's that, there's that layer of it. <laughs> Naturally, the other thing it does is, you know, slams you against the wall with all your fears. So you kind of hit that multiple times. And when you do that, you kind of realize, all right, I can use this, this fear, you know, emotion of fear as a powerful force I'd work within in my facilitation. And, and in a fairly high conflict and very complex situations. So, you know, it's a, it's a force. And, and what do we do with it? Do we use it to, you know, reach for higher goals or do we use it to take ourselves out? And, and you have to make that as a conscious choice because otherwise your body's biology will just look after the decision for you and take you down the path of, you know, mental illness. But, but if you actually decide to use fear as a force, um, for, for helping you, you know, for, for fuel, you're, you're going to be able to handle the unknown, the uncertainty and the unpredictable uh, with ease. So what does that mean, fear as a force? Because I think most of the work that I see among myself and the other women is, you know, fear, I don't even know how to use fear as a force. How do you do that? Well, I mean, what I have ended up doing is seeing everything as energy. And when you bring it down to energy, like that level, it, it's like it's like currents of of um, of energy. So which way is it going? And and that's the next question. You know, if you're sitting there, what, where, where is this going? And and so when it's a force to support you, it helps you go somewhere you you would like to go. I mean, it's not to move away from something because that's not visionary in the slightest. And I think most people listening to this program would know that. Um, you're, you're actually saying to yourself, I want to achieve something big. Yeah, it scares me, but that's okay. That's, that's a fine thing. Um, there's, a, there's an element of acceptance that goes with that. 
And what that means is you can get your biology working for you at the same time a whole lot easier because all of a sudden you're not trapped in that, that, that uh, you know, mess of, of, of flight, you know, fight, fight or, or flight. The usual, yeah, the usual thing. You're actually working with flow. So you're shifting it into a flow state. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and you know, I don't know if you, women have to be a nomad to figure this out, but I think if you lose your job, you shift to a new job, you decide to stay home after years of working, you decide to go back, whatever it is, however you transition, um, you often realize that a lot of our identity is set up external to us. What is our title? How much do I make? What do I do? So like, how long did it take you to, you know, you nomad for those, you were just, you were moving. I know you said you were house sitting, but you want to talk a little bit about your nomad experience? Well, yeah, sure. Well, first of all, the writing was on the wall and I refused to see it. Um, you know, I, my business went down in 08 when just about everybody else's went down. And, and you know, at the end of the one month, I found myself in my car <laughs> just with the, the thing packed with stuff thinking, well, now what, you know? And, and I'd lost all my equity in, in, the, in the sale. So you've got maybe a thousand bucks and you've got to figure out how you're, what's going to happen next. And I, for, you know, fortunately found a place where I could stay. So I got that far and, and you sort of, it, 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 it if in the place where I was in was, you know, it's dark, it's, it's raining, it's really small and it just feeds depression. And I just thought, oh man, I've been there. And that's a dark hole. It's a very, not, a, not a pleasant place to be. So I decided, and you can feel the energy spiral. It's, you know, the way I see depression and, and all of those emotions at the, at the crux is you can spiral down into it um, or you can catch yourself spiraling down in it to go, Oh no, you don't <laughs> Let's yeah. not go that way with my heart energy. Let's go something bigger. So it's, it's a very dynamic um, process of observing what your focus is on at the heart level and, and just what's the, how is the surrounding that you're in the context you're in shaping how you feel about things. And if you can sort of recognize that, then you can also, you have complete control over how you respond. And that's always the case. Uh, you always have control over how you respond, but it, it's, it's just understanding, you know, what are the cues and signals I use? So I, I actually have a pretty decent reading of, of, of what my, my context is and how I can work with it more effectively. So you that have to be, sense. yeah, I mean, yeah. I think just being so present to be aware of where you are in the process of energy, it sounds like. Yeah, although I, it sounds better now than it probably felt at the time. You know, at the yeah. time, it's kind of like all messy. But, you know, when you come out of it, you realize, oh, okay, that's what was going on. Because, you know, my sort of track on this is to be in the experience, but then also observe the experience. And when you can observe your experience, then you can actually say, ah, you know, this is what's happening. You get, you get a nice different, you get a different perspective going on with it. So, yeah, so that's how it all started. And, um, and then you just start, you know, my focus then shifted to looking at each thing with gratitude and appreciation, each moment. So we had a hundred dolphins come by the property that I was staying in and and i mean there's nothing more exhilarating than seeing a huge massive pod of dolphins just you know coming down the channel you're just sitting there in awe and so that was an unbelievable gift um you know just small things just focusing on small things and so one of the other and this is sort of a, a pivotal you know experience for me was i had about five bucks to my in my hand and I thought, okay, I can either go put gas in the car because I had managed to keep that going. There was a period where I didn't, I wasn't able to do that, but I'm in an isolated area. So not having a way to get around was kind of important, very important. I had five bucks. Do I put that in my car or do I get a head of lettuce so I can have my dinner? <laughs> so I'm sort of angry about this scene and I'm very upset with, with you know, how did I get in here and what is, you know, <laughs> all that stuff the chatter that goes on in one's head and and then I happen to be watching um, a documentary with um, uh, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman long way down and they had were motorcycling through Africa I'd been through Africa so some of the things they were seeing on the road I recognized and and basically this this little village had heard they were coming and they put little signs on the side of the road saying come in for dinner so these guys drove their 
big bikes down along with the whole entourage of, and this, this villa, these villagers had pooled their resources to provide them with dinner. And when they sat down for dinner, they knew full well that one or two people at the table were not gonna have food for the rest of the week because they'd given it up for the, for, they knew that, they were very clear about that. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, wow, I need to remember to shift my perspective completely and stop whining and stop focusing on the lack, but focus on the, the richness of what is and whatever that is. And so that was the, that was the shifting perspective um, confirmation. I mean, this is something I'd done all along as a, um, as a single parent in, in, in my role in facilitation was constantly shifting you know, points of view so I could see how people were coming together or not coming together, but to apply it to yourself in your own head, the, 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 the view from your head, uh, this, was, this was kind of like, oh, why didn't I think of that? So it was just, once that happens, uh, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what life throws at you, you realize it's all a matter of how you look at it. Mm, that is so beautiful. And I think it really takes some people to hit rock bottom, other people to shift their environment, some people to get let go, and, and some people do it and some don't. So for somebody who's going into maybe this time of year and feeling high anxiety, they're in the dep depression swirl, how do they shift themselves to some level of observation, do you think? Oh, gosh, uh, there's a bunch of techniques. I mm -hmm. mean, the ones I used to use years ago uh, was was just to look at it through the eyes of, of animals. So, you know, a mouse is looking for details, but you need the eagle to see where you're going. And so it's it's that shift in, in, in altitude, if you will. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one, the one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to is to look at at it through an appreciative view versus a um, fearful view, and and I think what we're really talking about here is using these uncertain times and uncertain moments to restore trust in oneself. Mm -hmm. I, I think the whole need to kind of have control over the environment, to have control over over other people, have control over what happens next, control over the future, is is um, unfortunate because we are designing the moment as we go it's a very co-creative process and to to pretend we have control over that would just deny the, the the emergence you know of what could come out that's way way better so i think i think it's just to sit back you know in mm -hmm. trust but in also in trusting yourself it's not just trusting like placing trust in the outside world, but it's trusting that you're capable of handling anything that shows up. You're strong. You are able to reach above where you are now and go for it. Um, and your little sign at the back, you got this, bang on, <laughs> yeah, totally. It uh, doesn't mean you won't run into a few walls, but it does mean that when you run into them, you know how to get you know, back up and keep going. I, I have to say I'm a horse rider, so <laughs> I fall off a lot. And, and you, one thing you learn is to get back up and keep going. So it's very much around that perseverance. You know, the anchor is, is very much, is very strong in, in keeping a complete focus on where you wanna be with yourself and, and then work with that. I love that. And I think really this is the essence of why I pulled this together because I've been on the same journey. Uh, from Ohio of all places, but really working from the inside out. And it took me a long time to like myself and I'm still, I'm still a work in progress, but I feel like it's given me, I started in 2016, really diving into mindfulness and meditation with John Kabat-Zinn's work. And it took me a long time to separate my thoughts from my body and recognize that that is just a piece of who I am and not all of who I am. And I love the, uh, the visual of the mouse and the eagle is you have to be the mouse and the eagle. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't be the mouse and the eagle, then hang out with the eagle or, or hang out with the mouse. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of diversity. That is why diversity is so critical in complex situations. We need to be able to see all of the perspectives and be with those perspectives just so we can see the whole picture. I mean, that's, that's a huge part of it. 
Yeah, it's really amazing. And I think for many of us, bringing women together to really work from the inside out, because we're taught from such an early age that our definition of ourself is external. And unless you go on some type of personal journey or you're forced into a journey uh, to dive inward, you know, you kind of live on the peripheral for a long, a large part of your life. Yeah. No, that's extremely true. And it's funny because going back to when this whole dive took place, you know, I'd sort of, my daughter was just about out of high school and, and I, I sort of thought, okay, she's, she's okay. I need to up my game in terms of the leadership role I'm playing. And, and then I lost everything. So it's like, that's the forced part of the journey where you go. And yet I set the intention. I mean, you know, I set myself up. I knew that at the time I thought, oh, I just, you know, I don't know what's going to happen if I say this, but I'm going to, so you say it and then you go, oh, that's what happened. Okay. So, you know, you find yourself on this journey, whether you wouldn't, you probably never sign up for it ever, but there you are nine years later being on the road and you're going to kind of go, okay, I think I got this now what's next. Um, and, you know, I would have said, I think I've got this before, like two years in to the journey, but then you go, well, okay, I'm, I'm just saying that because I really want it to be over. <laughs> and I, you know, clearly I hadn't been pushed far enough. So, so that's the, that's the beautiful, you know, the, yeah. the part of it that, you know, there's this whole resistance to the experience combined with the acceptance that this is the experience, you know, and the more we can live in the present and just be with the moment the better chance we have of making a really solid, clear choice on, you know, that benefits everyone, you know, but, but really is true to being you at the core. Yeah, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Cause I hear so many people say, well, when I can do this or after this, I'm really going to do this. And, yeah. you know, even people very close to me. And I love the idea that you are in the experience. This is the experience you're supposed to be in. And the fact that, and I know Oprah has said this too, where she said, you know, I want to learn my biggest lessons or something similar to you. Like I want to up my game. And then you end up like in the mud puddle and you're like, well, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> no. no, no, but the, but there it is, you know, there it is. Yeah. So. yeah. So you talk a lot about like muscle memory to manage the depression. Can you dive a little bit farther into that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not even sure what I was referencing when I said that, because that which happens, but um, it was it had more to do with, in, you know, when I look back on it, it's just it, it's making <laughs> it's making that observation around where's my heart's energy going? Am I feeling, re, you know, is there reciprocity in these environments I'm in? Am I am I receiving energy as much as I'm giving it? And of course, in the pandemic, this is what has really come out in workplaces, workplaces that are not recharging people's hearts will lose their people. It's simple mm. because you need all the heart you have in order to stay functional in, in the environments we're in. So, so when we talk about muscle memory with depression, I, I think what I was referring to <laughs> was, I hope, um, was, was just that capacity to kind of, you know, you're in the moment, but at the same time, you're observing yourself at the, you know, this is a facilitation skill, but it could be anybody's skill. You're witness to your moment, if you will. And, and you're sort of noticing somatically and in my physical body, how do I feel? And we forget to ask ourselves that because we're drive driven. So, and I mean, I perfect case of this, but I'm driven a lot by my mental will to get through things or whatever. And when you let that go, you're still got a fairly, you know, decent focus mentally on what's going on. And that's just part of the deal. But when you step back, you get the whole, you get everything else, you're all of your resources at work. So that's the energy side of it. It's being able to recognize, okay, I'm not getting back what I need. Burnout is a good example of too much heart given for something that, you know, you didn't get, it didn't come back. It's, you know, that's, that's one, one expression of it. Mm -hmm. um, depression is, is um, actually, you know, I noticed this in my work biologically depression, you know, repression of your expression, your capacity to express yourself, repression of that creates depression, your energy goes in or aggression. The energy goes out in not usually pleasant ways. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's um, when I figured that out watching groups and then later on, it was confirmed by a lot, you know, by somebody in the, in the health sector who does the biology side of it. I thought, wow, there's a lot of repressed expression and it's in the, you know, it's showing up as depression rates. So the muscle memory part of that is to recognize, okay, where have I, have I been, have I been here before? And, and can I lead myself out of it? Um, so that's the one aspect of it. 
And the other aspect of it is when you're when you found yourself circling down, express, whether it's photography, writing, art, it doesn't matter. Just get, you know, express. And because that will, I mean, these hard journeys are hard for a reason. They they that slam against the wall, bring out more of, of what you're capable of at a creative level to adapt, and or you let yourself go just go down. So it, it's it's a it's a real um, uh, litmus, litmus test yeah. for your capacity to pull yourself out, uh, reach up, and and find energy in the small small steps. That's the key to it. Is just don't try and do big things. Just do small things. Yes, yeah. So what I'm taking away so far is you have to observe where you're at, and then if you find yourself kind of swirling or you've already swirled, finding ways to be creative, whatever that is for you. I mean, you talked earlier about nature. I know Sharon and I, and even Shannon, talk about nature. Like just get outside and be observant. Listen for five sounds. Listen, see five new things. But then having gratitude for the smallest things. You know, if that's where you need to start. Yep. Small steps do it. And I mean, the other side of it for nature is we, we, it's funny, we go to nature for our, our, um, our replenishment and our rejuvenation, but right now environmental protection is, is the lowest priority for business for, you know, ecologically for a lot of people. So I think the, 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 there's an, you know, we ask nature for energy. So giving back would be any kind of action toward respecting biodiversity toward respecting what we're receiving from nature. And I think that reciprocity alone is a, is a muscle um, memory. It's sort of one that goes automatically, you know, when you're asking for something that you're going to, to actually uh, respond with a, a respect and appreciation at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so if someone's listening to this and they're like, I don't know what that means. Cause that, you know, <laughs> can you give an example of like giving back, like bio, like what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I'm not trying to write an article on this, actually. Um, people, there's an Orphan Wildlife Center, which is south of, of Vancouver, where I live. And, and they have uh, birds of prey come in all the time. And these birds of prey have been poisoned by lead from lead fishing mm. things, whatever. Mm -hmm. they are. I'm not a fisherman, obviously, but lead, mm. lead fish, you know, so simple tasks like switch your gear from lead to something that doesn't kill wildlife. Mm. Um, throwing bananas out the, out the door of your car means a bird of prey will land on it and get hit. They get hit all the time. So just cleaning up after ourselves. I mean, this oh, is I very see. fundamental, you know, rules of life, you know, <laughs> keep the mat nest clean, <laughs> you know, just clean up after ourselves. Yeah. And, so the and, littlest things, right? Like just cleaning up your yard, don't throw plastic, you know, anywhere, you know, if you see it on the street, pick it up, like whatever you can do to make the world a better place. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, we've got some videos, I think, on YouTube of bubble gum, somebody throwing out their bubble gum and a hummingbird getting stuck in it. That's not, you know, it's, it's no big deal for the human. They just throw it away. But this little bird, they're, they're so phenomenally beautiful and, and, and I mean, just unbelievable works of art, exquisite, stuck in it. And so, you know, I think we just can step our game in terms of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so much. Yeah. I think all of us can agree that we, pro we are the most destructive, right. Animal on the planet by far. Uh, so I was listening to Deepak Chopra the other day and he was talking about, you know, having peace, just being by yourself. And you talk a lot about, you know, what does calm mean to you? So when you, when we are talking to people, I mean, the word calm, I think you think about being in a, in a situation where you have to mind your manners and mind your thoughts and comments, but I don't think that's what you're talking about. No, I'm not. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's peace in the heart, essentially. I mean, you've got to quiet the chatter because <laughs> that, that just, that just uh, obliterates any, any kind of messaging, you know, that you're getting from your environment or if you're from your deeper source. Mm -hmm. um, the, the calm then is just, is, it's just to be at peace with what shows up and to not, you know, do, do your best not to fight it, but it's just to recognize that, that what you have in the moment is what you're working with. So instead of putting a lot of energy into resisting it or trying to control it, it's just, yeah, just sit down and, and be at peace with it. 
Yeah. And I think that kind of goes to the title too, is that's how you strengthen your resilience. When you believe it showed up on purpose and that it's for you and not being done to you, you actually can bounce through it, hopefully. Well, and you know, you've just brilliantly said the difference between, you know, between being a co-creator and a victim. When you work with what shows up, you can co-create with it. You can make something better. And your focus is always on learning. What can I learn? You know, how can I learn from what can it, what's ahead? And, and, and so the victim will say it, it was done to me or they did it. I mean, you hear that in politics all the time. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Yeah. The, the yeah. level of offloading of responsibility, but, but essentially that you've just described it perfectly. That's the difference in the dynamic. Yeah, this is so, and feel free if anyone has any questions to jump in, but I feel like this for me really summarizes why I wanted to bring this community of women together. Because I think this innate knowing takes time. And for those of us that are ahead of other people, we can help other people work through this so that we can have more feminine energy, um, not only be comfortable in their own skin, but step more into their power. Yeah, brilliant. And much needed now as well. Yeah, I really love that. And I think many people aren't going to be getting their heart filled at work, that they are going to have to find other ways to do that for themselves. Yeah, the pressure is on companies right now to figure it out. I mean, they've been running mechanistically for, you know, since way, way back in the industrial period, and they haven't really adapted much. So the pressure is on everyone to adapt. And those companies that adapt into a more of a, what we're now calling in the business world, the human centered approach whatever that sounds and looks like, but it's just, you know, to be more, bring, bring heart into it. Those ones will do much better. Um, but the ones that are insisting that business, you know, the process and the mechanics are, you know, and the profit word is, is the run. Those ones will not be able to, because they're not focused on adapting. They're focused on preserving the existing situation. So we're, we're being called on to adapt in, in rapid and, and exponential ways, pretty much the same way nature innovates, actually. We're being called upon to adapt. And um, it's time for that to happen. We have to step back a bit. And that's where, you know, a massive disruption really works well for just sort of breaking all the, <laughs> breaking all right. the, the patterns and just sort of saying, now what do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, that's fabulous. So tell us a little bit about what the work, I mean, I know this is a lot about your life and sort of your learnings and how you're helping others, but how do you convert that into the work that you do? Well, essentially, I mean, if you look at things from a, like the mathematics of it or the fractal, everything is self-similar. It, it, it's so when you take, you know, when you spend the time connecting with who you are, you can only work in certain kind of workplaces mm -hmm. and those workplaces have to be calibrated or have to be designed to receive that level of talent that you bring. And mm -hmm. if they're not designed then you, for that, then you obviously won't stay. It's just not the old days of a transactional deal where you show up at work and I give you money are over. That's done. So we are in a place now where you show up for work and we will transform the world together. We need a, you know, it's, it's guided by a higher level of purpose, a higher sense of integrity and, a lot, you know, and, and um, shared meaning, if you will a strong sense of belonging. Uh, those are things that define spirit. And those are things that define the spirit at the individual level. And they define the spirit at a company level or at a wider, you know, in, in the, at a wider level, even in the world. So I think that's, um, but that's the, the direct relevance is, is you can only go, I mean, maybe this is a belief that somebody could challenge me on and it might break the belief and I'd be okay with that, <laughs> but you can only go as far as you've evolved yourself. So you really, as a, you know, in your leadership role, you have to evolve. You, you know, you need to, to become more of what you're capable of, not less from the experiences that we, we are in at the moment. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's, that's. It's super I'm helpful. And I know you're working with companies and different organizations across the world, really helping to connect leaders to the heart center, but even more importantly, evolve, help them evolve so they can grow and maintain their teams. 
Yeah, big, big time. But the other factor of it is, and the door that I've been using is decision making, because we have traditionally made our decisions that if we do this and this will happen, you know, it's, it's very linear and it completely ignores the fact that we're not in a linear environment. We are in a complex, you know, I mean, it's a living system. The, the, the nature is a living system. Companies are living systems of interactions. Why don't we actually decide to make decisions and, and, and behave accordingly. You know? yeah. So let's just adapt our decision making. And that would include, you know, bringing in diversity, because if you don't have that, you don't have the, 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 all the facets uh, of the picture in mind. Um, I used the word pixels the other day and somebody took it literally as an image, but I mean, I mean, it's a, you know, every, every person is a, is a, pers a pixel, an image in the, in the wider picture. And when you're making decisions, you have to know that if you make this decision, these are the this is where it's going to ping. And there's a whole bunch of things in systems that you have no idea how it's going to play out. So this is where you ultimately have to just kind of sit back and say, well, let's see what shows up next, and then we'll work with that. So so it's by definition that that we're working with um, uncertainty. It's it's not even a it's not like a uh, uh, the latest ride in in the current you know ex, it's it's not like that at all this is the way it is so yes yeah. yes well this was brilliant I, I think for so many I know me it just validates what we're experiencing but both at work and internally and I think that for many of us it is time to work from the inside out and you can only do that if you are aware, if you're starting to observe, if you're understanding sort of how your thoughts impact your actions, and then just having this um, immense amount of gratitude, which takes practice. You can't just be grateful. It really takes practice and you start small, as you mentioned earlier. So with that, do you have any parting words or anything else that we didn't cover that you want to share? Just one, um, and that has to do with fear because a lot of times people don't actually recognize when they're coming from that state, mm -hmm. but you can tell when people jump to conclusions that they're acting out of fear. And the, and the simple um, flip on it is that, that the, the flip side of the frequency of, of fear is curiosity. So if in the moment you can, you know, you hit something, you just want to jump to a conclusion and you, you go, yeah, well, tell me more. But if you can flip it to a question instead of a conclusion, that's how the shift in the thinking starts mm, and the capacity that. to to work with what you don't, you know, what you, what you, you know, you can't control. It's like trying to control the uncontrollable. Just stop trying to do that. It's a waste of energy. Go back, ask some questions and see what shows up. So Thank having you. curiosity, having curiosity for whether at your work, at home, in your family, even over the holidays, it might be good. Just be like, tell me more about that. Even though you're like, you're crazy. Yes. Tell me more <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, this, this is beyond what I could have ever imagined. I feel like we could have a whole session just on fear and maybe we'll do that in the future. But I really appreciate Donna, you joining us from British Columbia. We are now you know, all of North America we're covering now with Canada and the U.S. and hopefully beyond. So thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your journey. If you're interested in Donna, want to connect with her directly, she does have a profile on TogetherWeSeek.online. You can reach out to her directly, learn more about her work. And if your organization can benefit or your team, I hope that you will reach out to her and ask her more questions and uh, really gain some of the knowledge that you've gained over your lifetime. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been such an honor. I'm, I'm really grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you so much.